Hello there, it's me, and I'm a quick person, and this is Elective ICT. Today's lesson I've got is on data representation, and this is data representation one. So what it means is that I can expect more on data representation. My email still remains with people at data.gmail.com. So without wasting much time, let's get right into today's tutorial. All right, so let's input all your life. Yes, all your life, you'll be faced with a choice. You can choose love or hate. I choose love. I think where you have to choose between love and hate, I would urge you to choose love. And Johnny Cash said this. Johnny Cash was a songwriter and a singer, an American songwriter and singer. And then it's asking you to choose love, which is a good thing. So let's not take tips. I don't know if this lesson, the student should be able to explain units of data storage, explain how characters are represented, and then explain coding information using a bit pattern or a coding scheme. So you can have this as coding information using a bit pattern or only encoding scheme. They're the same thing. All right, so units of data storage, units of data storage. So we're looking at units of data storage as how computer data is expressed. And then this is not different from your kilo, kilometers, your meters, your centimeters, and the things that you know in mathematics. Yes, but in computer or in computing, we don't use the kilometers and things. We use bytes, bits, and then uh, the rest that we have or you already know. So looking at how computer data is expressed at the end of the day is what is stem or is what you're looking at as units of data storage. And you have the first one to be bits. So date clearly uh, means binary digits. And as binary digits, it is the smallest possible, it is the smallest value you can uh, get when it comes to representing uh, it in, as a computer data storage. It is the smallest, because it has only two possible binary values, either zero or one, that is all. And the next one is label. With label, it has up to four bits. So with Nibble having uh, up to four bits, it means that you have 16 possible ways of storing characters. 16 possible ways of storing characters. Yeah, so the next one is byte. And then byte is a, a unit of data storage made up up to eight bits. Don't forget that bit is two possible ways, that's zero or one. Nibble is four, giving us 16 possible ways. And then byte is eight, using eight bits to represent a character. That's eight zeros through to eight ones. And then you have 256 ways to do this. You just have to do two with the power eight, and it will give you the number of ways or possible values to represent a character. That's 256 per byte because it uses eight bits. Then from there you have kilobytes. From there you have kilobytes. Now with kilobytes, they are looking at 1,024 bytes. They are looking at 1,024 bytes. That is the actual thing you need but in computer storage you're looking at thousand bytes then from there you have megabytes so with megabytes you're looking at thousand and twenty four kilobytes but in actual computer storage again it is thousand kilobytes so from megabytes you have gigabytes and gigabytes you're looking at thousand and twenty four megabytes but in actual computer storage or usage you have thousand megabytes so these are how data uh, uh stored on your computer you can have page you can have label you can have bytes you can have kilobytes you can have megabytes you can have gigabytes you have terabytes you have exabytes you have petabytes or you have petabytes and then exabytes but at the end of the day everything goes to zeros and ones there's terabytes which is 1024 uh, gigabyte, but in actual computer usage, it is 1000 gigabytes. Then there is petabyte, which is 1024 terabytes, but, but in actual computer usage, it is 1000 terabytes. And then there is exabyte. It doesn't end here. There are others as well, but these are enough. And then these are units of data storage. I, don't forget, that I said that when you're looking at units of data storage, you're looking at, or you look at it as your centimeters and the things that you have. So with this, you're looking at the capacity. How much data you can store or you can save on a storage device at a time you're looking at capacity units of data storage character representation character a unit of information represented in binary is usually grouped together in a character set a character set is a complete set of the characters and their number codes that can be recognized by the computer system this includes letters and numbers also known as alphanumeric symbols like the asterisk 
ampersand etc and control characters like the shift and escape e now if a computer is going to store and process information that information has to be stored in binary this is something that i think we can agree on so that information has to be stored in binary for the computer to understand and use that information or process whatever it needs to process so if you want your computer to to store and process characters such as capital and small letters, numbers, symbols, and punctuations, then there is a need for them to be stored in binary. But there is a code point for this. Okay, so the symbols, what you know as your, uh, your images that you have, and then numbers and text, all these things are saved on the computer as code points. So it is this code point that if the computer would further break or take or convert to binary. So it doesn't go straight to binary. So your images, your other things that you have all have code points. So the computer will pick this code point and subsequently convert the code point to binary. Do is to demonstrate a code point for some of the alphabets uh, using Excel, but I'll show you the Microsoft Word for, uh, I'll show you Microsoft Word for symbols and then I'll use Excel demonstrate for some of the alphabets now you should know that the capital a and then small a are not the same they, they all have their own code points and the same thing applies to all the alphabets or the rest of the alphabet so capital a small a are not the same so let me show you one microsoft word and then we'll come back to excel now when you watch down here let me undo this now when you watch here what here as I change the symbols. Now, when I as I change the symbols, you see that the character code or the code point I told you about would also change. Don't forget about the unit code you see here. I will discuss that with you shortly. Now, let's say that I choose the copyright symbol. All right, when I choose the copyright symbol, you see that it changed here. Let me choose another one, the register one. When I choose a register sign or symbol, you see that it changed. Let me choose a different one. So any symbol you choose changes accordingly. So there is a code point or a character code for all the symbols that you have. And the same thing applies to the alphabet. Any character at all has a code point. So it is this code point that a computer would further convert to binary because everything is stored at the end of the day in binary. That's zeros and ones. So code points are then or further converted to binary. So everything has a code point. I'll use Excel to demonstrate the alphabet. But yes, you have a ski, you have Unicode, which I'll discuss with you shortly. So don't worry about it. Let's use capital A for well, this one. I'll come back to use capital B. And then we'll go back to small A and small B. So that's 65. So there's a code point for A. That's 65, so 065. So if you want to represent A, A will be stored on the computer as 065 or as 65 or 65. Then this 65 will further be converted to binary to represent A. So when you convert this to binary, the 65 you have there on the computer, that is your binary value for A. So A is stored as a code point. What you have on your screen right now is code point for A. So this code point will further be converted to binary. When you convert this using your calculator or doing manually, something that we we'll look at uh, and not in this very video, but subsequent to us, you convert this to binary, and then this is how, or the result you get is how A is stored on your computer at the end of the day. So let's go for B. So you have B to be 66. So let me jump to somewhere like that. And then you have Z to be 90. Let's go to lowercase, lowercase a. You have 97 for lowercase a. Lowercase b is 98. And let's go to lowercase z. And that's 122. So these are code points, and these are the numbers, or these code points will be further. Uh, these code points are further converted to uh, binary. Yeah, so what you are saying is for every character, okay, be it number, be it text, be it symbol, anything at all, that has to be 
uh, that, that the computer needs to store or process has to be taken to binary. But to take these characters to binary, you first have to what? Uh, the first, there is a code point that represents these characters on the computer. So it is the code point that is further converted to binary. So the character does not move straight to binary just like that. No, they are represented by code points. So this code point or character code, which we saw in Excel and then in Microsoft Word, are the ones that are converted to binary at the end of the day. Everything at the end of the day goes to zeros and one. All right. Now, we have discussed that uh, everything goes to binary at the end of the day, that's zeros and ones. But how are they done? Okay, how are they done? How are they represented? So the how or the ways in which these code points are taken to binary is what we are going to look at. So that's coding information using a bit pattern or you can say encoding schemes. Encoding schemes. There are uh, more than what we look at. There are more encoding schemes than what we are going to look at, but they are the basic ones and they are the ones that you are going to find anywhere. So we'll look at three basic encoding schemes. These encoding schemes are ways of representing characters on the computer or in the computer. So we have one to be ASCII, ASCII, ASCII. So don't forget, I said encoding schemes are simply way to represent a character in binary in a computer or on a computer. So we have the first one to be ASCII. Now ASCII, American Standard Code for Information interchange is a character encoding scheme so it was first it was it was the first character encoding uh, standard and then they started with seven bit represent english characters all right so the code point that we had it is ascii so from microsoft word if you uh, if you remember you saw ascii and then unicode then i told you not to worry but you're going to look at them yes so they started with seven bits represent characters to what uh, numbers that is the code point or the character code which is further converted to binary so we started with seven bits that's seven zeros two two seven ones so when you do two is a four seven you are getting 128 possible ways of representing so they they started with uh seven bits and it was developed to take care of the english characters or developed to take care of the english characters but it was later extended to seven, uh, eight bits because it wasn't enough. It wasn't taking care of everything. 128, about zero to 127 wasn't enough for all the characters that we have or we had there. So it was there was a need for it to be extended. So it was extended to eight bits. So now we don't have seven bits as key, but we have eight bits as key. Eight bits as key. So this made it possible to get extra characters. Uh, such as special symbols and other foreign language letters and drawing characters. So when it was extended to eight bits, it means that we had 256 ways of representing characters instead of the 128 ways of representing characters. But it still wasn't enough for the Asian languages or some of the Asian languages like Chinese. It wasn't enough. ASCII wasn't enough. It started at seven bits to represent English characters as four points. That was further or was later extended to eight bits. So now there is eight bit ASCII, or now ASCII is eight bits. Even though it was later extended, it still wasn't enough. It didn't meet a lot of the Asian languages or the Chinese languages, or the Chinese language, I should say. So there was a need for another encoding scheme to be developed. So ASCII, don't forget that one started at seven bits. It was further extended to eight bits. When it was seven bits, you have 128 ways of representing character that is zero through to 127. Then it was further extended to eight bits. Then the eight bits wasn't enough, though it took care of certain symbols, it still wasn't enough. So there was a need for another encoding scheme to be developed. Now, EPSEDIC, EPSEDIC. But even before EPSEDIC, let me talk about Unicode. Then I'll later come back to FCDIC. Now, Unicode. Which Unicode, Unicode is a universal character encoding standard. And then Unicode was developed to solve the challenge or the problem that ASCII had. Let me mention that ASCII is used on personal computers. The ASCII and Unicode are used on personal computers. That's why you saw it in the 
uh, Excel, uh, the Microsoft Word thing that we did when I showed you the symbol. So yes, Unicode and ASCII are used in com uh, personal computers. But Unicode came in to solve the problem that ASCII had. ASCII wasn't able to represent some Asian languages or the Chinese language. So Unicode came in to solve that problem, making Unicode a universal character and code standard. So Unicode uses four bytes to represent characters and it provides a very wide variety of encoding. It has three types. So you have the UTF-8, so UTF-16, and then UTF-32. UTF is a Unicode transformation format. So Unicode UTF-8 was made so that it would be compatible with ASCII. So machines or computers or devices that were made with 8-bit would be compatible using the Unicode because Unicode also has 8-bit, it has 16-bit, and then it has 32-bit. Now, when you reach the power 8, you are getting what ASCII gave us. But when you reach to the power 16, you are getting more than ASCII uh, provided. And when you reach the power 32, you are getting way, way, way more than ASCII provided. So yes, this makes Unicode the universal standard because it allows you to represent a lot of characters in different possible ways. Different possible ways. So encoding schemes, well, let me, let me, I finish with Epsidic. So now, uh, Epsidic. Epsidic, uh, Epsidic is mainly for uh, servers. Servers, that's IBM mainframe and then Midrich uh, computer operating system. So Epsidic run on servers. Don't forget any machine or any computer runs at the end of the day in zeros and ones or on zeros and ones. So you need encoding schemes to change them to the zeros and ones. So what encoding schemes do, uh, so what encoding schemes do are to uh, represent the various characters that we have as code points. And then this code point is further sent or converted to binary. And I'm saying that for the encoding schemes, we have ASCII, we have Unicode, we have Epsidic. Now, ASCII started at seven bits, but later, extended to eight bits. It started by taking care of the English languages when it was seven bits, and then it added some special symbols when it uh, was extended to eight bits. Even though it represents a lot more, it still wasn't enough for certain languages like the Chinese language. So Unicode had to come in. Now Unicode came in to solve that problem because with Unicode, you have 88 bits, you have 16 bits, and then you have the 32 bits. Now, when you do 2 is the power 8, you are getting that of ASCII. But when you do 2 is the power 16, you are getting more than that. When you do 2 is the power 32, you are getting a lot more, more than ASCII had. So making Unicode a very fine way of representing characters for every other language or, uh, yes, or symbols that we have. Then, Epsidic. Now, Epsidic came in to solve server problems. So IBM Midrange and Mayframe and other servers that we have run on Epsidic. Epsidic is also an encoding scheme. Epsidic started with 8 bits and still runs on 8 bits. So for personal computers, you're looking at ASCII and Unicode. For servers, you're looking at Epsidic. All right, so all too soon, we've come to the end of this lesson. And then you have some questions here to try your hands on. Explain how characters are represented in a computer system. Let's three encoding schemes and explain any two. State three differences between the three encoding schemes. Uh, don't forget, just look at the description of the video. I'll put some notes there for you to copy, go through, send me email where appropriate or where possible. And then I'll do my best to uh, answer all questions that you have. So uh, thanks for watching. Next tutorials will be on performing binary arithmetic. Subscribe and keep the channel active. Until then, it's bye.